This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, this is going to be kind of different. I'm starting a series where in each video we look at a, a number of NPM packages, or I should say JavaScript packages, that I think might be able to help you in certain situations. So these are going to it's going to be geared towards smaller packages that have a specific purpose, rather than looking at something like Express or some large framework, which I could do a whole tutorial on or whole crash course on. This is more for just small packages for specific purposes. So in this video, we're going to take a look at about seven different packages here. I have all the GitHub links in the description. Um, we're going to go over moment or moment JS, which is a library to, as you can see, parse, validate and manipulate dates and times in JavaScript. Um, really cool library. It's pretty popular. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this and, and heard of some of these. Um, as the episodes go along, we'll get into to some less common packages. So next we have node slug, which is used to uh, create slugs on the fly. We have bcrypt JS, which is for password encryption, password hashing. We have node JWT simple, which is for JSON web tokens, kind of an easy way to generate tokens and validate them. Node config, which is used for global configuration or global uh, variables. Node UUID, which is for generating random IDs. random universal IDs and then request, which is uh, an HTTP client that you can use and it's mostly used on the back end. So if you need to interact with some API, you know, with a payment processor API or something like that, you can use request on the back end. All right. So those are the ones that we're going to go over. Now I just have an empty folder in VS Code here and what I'm going to do is go one by one and just talk about it a little bit, show you how they work. I'm not going to just make a video telling you what they are. I want to actually dive in and, and just show you how they work, experiment a little bit. So let's go ahead and first generate or initialize a package.json here. And then I'm going to just install moment because that's what we're going to look at first. All right. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to create a separate file for some of these Um, for some of the smaller ones, I might integrate into other files, but for moment, I'm going to create a file called underscore moment dot JS. I added the underscore just so there's no confusion with the actual package. So let's bring this in. So bring in require moment. And I'm not going to go over everything with these these packages. I want to keep these episodes under a half hour. So we'll just kind of look at some of the common functionality and, and so on. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a or initialize a variable called val instead of having a bunch of console logs. I'm just going to console log val at the end because basically I want to show you the different things that we can do with dates. And the way it works is we just call moment. Uh, moment like that. And then we do a dot format and we can put in here how we want to format our date. So let's say we want year dash month dash day. Now, if I don't put anything in here inside the the parentheses, then it's going to just work on. It's going to work with the current date and time. So if I save this and I run node underscore moment. You can see I get 2019.57, which is today. So doing this isn't, I mean, you don't really need a library to do this. You can do this with regular JavaScript, but there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do, which I'm going to show you. Um, so I'm going to go to the docs because there's a lot of good examples. Now, the GitHub page has a link to the documentation, which is a whole website, momentjs.com. If we go to the home page here, you can see all the different types of things we can do. So let's say we want to format a date like this, May 7th, 2019, the time and all that. We could grab this and I'm going to uh, let's see, we'll take Val and we'll overwrite it. Paste that in there and save and then let's go ahead and run that. And you can see we get a nicely formatted May 7th, 2019 with the time. So this is great for like blog posts and stuff like that. Um, now, as I said, if you leave this blank, it's going to just pertain to 
today's date and time, but you can put whatever you want in here in pretty much any format you want. If I want to do like 2005-03-05, if I want to do that, you'll see that it will format that date. And I get 12 a.m. because I didn't I don't have a time here, but the format does have the hours, minutes and seconds. So I could just I could just actually you know what I'll do is copy this down and just get rid of this. All right, so if we go ahead and run that, we just get March 5th, 2005. Okay, um, let's see. Another thing we can do if we look over here is we can get the day and different variations of it. We can abbreviate it, stuff like that. So if I say val equals moment dot format and then four D's, what I'll get is today, which is Tuesday. If I want to abbreviate it, I can do three D's. And that will give me TUE. If I want to do two D's, that will give me TU. And if I do just one D, that'll actually give me the number of the day of the week, which is two for Tuesday. All right, so we can do that. Um, if we want to escape within the, the date here, let's see, we'll say val equals. Um, what I'll do is inside these brackets, we can put whatever we want, like the year is. Get rid of this here. So if I run that, whoops, yeah, if I run that, we get the year is 2019. So we can also do stuff with relative time. So basically, if we have a date and we want to find out how many years it was, how many days or whatever, we can do that. Um, so I'm going to copy this line. I'm just copying this so I don't have to type it all out because it's right there. Um, so let's do that. And what it's going to do is take this date. So this is a uh, 2011 and you can see you can format this however you want. If you want to put dashes in here, you can. But uh, and same thing up here. If I do that, that's fine. If I put slashes, that's fine. It, it, it knows what you mean. So if we run this, we get eight years ago. So this 2011 date, this was eight years ago. If I change it to, let's say 2000 and I run it, we get 19 years ago. Okay, so we can do that. Um, let's see, we can also get like the start of the day. So how long ago did the day start? So we'll say val equals. Oops, I lost it. So start of day from now. So if I run that, so 17 hours ago, the day started. It's about 4:30 right now. Now, if I want to see the start of the month, I can also do that. If I run that. Start of the month was seven days ago. We could do the start of the year. Start of the year was four months ago. And at the same time, we can do the end of. So I can grab this and we can change start of to end of. So let's say end of the year. So in eight months. Okay, so if in your applications you need to find out how long is left in the year, um, it'll give you that. So this is great for like membership sites, stuff like that. If we want to do the end of the week, it says in four days. Okay, so in four days the week will end. Then we can do stuff with the calendar. So we can add and subtract days, months, years. So if I take this and we say val equals moment dot subtract. And this takes in two parameters, takes in the number and then the you know days, months, years, and then dot calendar. So if I go ahead and run that, I get last Wednesday at 4.38 p.m. That was exactly six days ago. If I want to do, let's say, 10, what's 10 weeks ago? I can just say 10 weeks and we get 2.26.2019. Now, You can, of course, put other dates in here right now. This is from today's date. But if I wanted to do, let's say, 10 weeks before uh, 2017, 03, I'm just putting in random dates here. So if I run that, we get 12, 25, 2016, which is 10 weeks before this date. We can also add. So I'll go ahead and paste that in. instead of subtract. Let's say add and let's add 10 years. All right. So right now we have a 2017 date. So this should give us three, five, 2027 when I run this. Okay, which is 10 years from this date. 
So I think that's all I'm going to do as far as moment goes. But there's a lot you can do when it comes to dates. So it can be very, very helpful. Um, there's there's also sub component or sub uh, uh, packages like react moment, for instance, where you can actually use it as a react component to output dates in your UI. So that's moment. The next one I want to look at is slug, which is pretty simple but helpful when it comes to uh, generating slug. So I'm going to create a file called underscore slug dot JS. And so let's install it. So we want to do NPM install slug. And if you're not familiar with slugs, basically, if you have, let's say, a blog post and you want the title to be the URL, um, but you need it formatted with either underscores or hyphens or whatever. That's that's a slug. So we can easily do that. And of course, you can do this on your own in JavaScript, um, but this saves you a lot of time and it has some cool options and stuff. So I figured I'd throw it in here. So let's require slug. And what I'm going to do here is actually create a function called slugify. And a lot of times with these these uh, packages I'm showing you, you would use inside like express some kind of web framework. You'd use it like in a route. Um, but I didn't want to include express. I'm just creating pure functions and using the console. So this slugify is going to take in, let's just call it words. So it could be any number of words. And then I'm going to return from it slug, which I just brought in up top and then pass in words. Okay, so just doing that, if I call, uh, let's do a console, uh, console log slugify, and let's say we have maybe a blog post title called blog post one like that. So if I were to run this with node underscore slug, I get blog dash post dash one. Now, usually when you create slugs for URLs, you're going to want these all lowercase so we can pass in a second parameter of options and we can say lower and we can set that to true. That way, when we run this, we get all lowercase with a hyphen. Now, you might not want a hyphen. You might want an underscore. So we could do here a replacement. So we could replace the hyphen with an underscore if we want. And now we get all lowercase with underscores or if you don't want anything, if you just want it all kind of mushed together, then we get blog posts one all mushed together. All right. So pretty simple, but it can be useful if you're working with like a blog application and you need to create slugs for routes or something. All right. So that's slug. Uh, let's see. Next one we're going to look at is Bcrypt or I should say Bcrypt JS because there is a, a regular Bcrypt. But I've had a lot of issues with it in the past when it comes to like the de dependencies and stuff like that, especially on Windows machines. So Bcrypt JS has always been uh, has always worked really well for me. So this is for encrypting or, or creating password hashes because you never want to store um, plain text passwords in your database. So let's install this Bcrypt JS. And I'll create a file called underscore Uh, bcrypt we'll do bcrypt.js and let's bring it in and I've used this in in a bunch of my Udemy courses and some of my YouTube videos so you might have seen me use it before but like I said usually it's going to be with express or something like that you're going to get the you know they're going to send the password in through a form we're just going to kind of mimic that now Uh, these bcrypt methods that we use, they return a promise. So I'm actually going to use a sync await. So I'm going to create a function here to um, hash password. Uh, let's say hash password. And I'm just going to pass in here. We'll just call this plain text. So this is the plain text password. And I'm going to create a user in here. And let's give this user a name. Uh, let's say name, let's say email. And for the password, initially it's going to be the plain text value. Okay, so usually what would happen is they'd submit a form to register a user and, reg and they'd send the plain text and then you want to run it through Bcrypt 
to hash it and then store it in the database. So we want to take this user and we want to change this to a hash password. So first thing we're going to do is create what's called a salt that's used to hash the password. And we get this with a uh, actually I can show you in the docs real quick. So we use a method called gen salt and you can do it synchronously or asynchronously. I would highly recommend keeping your code asynchronous. Um, but right here they do gen salt and they use the they use a callback. All right. And then inside that callback, they do dot hash using the salt. And this looks kind of messy. So a sync await really makes this look a lot better. So we can simply do a wait bcrypt dot um, gen salt and it takes in what are called rounds. I'm going to use 10, which is the default in the in the documentation. So that will give us the salt. In fact, I can go ahead and uh, console log that and run. Let's run hash password and let's pass in plain text. So if I run node underscore bcrypt, oops, what did I do? Plain text is not defined. Why did I pass? <laughs> We want to pass in something here. Pass in a string of one through six. Okay, so this is the salt. Now this is used to generate the hash. This is not the password. This isn't the hash password. To do that, we use a method called hash bcrypt.hash. So I'm going to take the user object that I created and take the password, which right now is plain text, and I'm going to call await bcrypt.hash, which takes in two things. It takes in the plain text password and it takes in the salt that we created. Okay, and then down here in the console log, um, let's just console log the user. Okay, so I'm going to run this hash password now with that one through six. And what it gives back is the user object. But if you look at the password, we have this long string. Okay, so we now have this encrypted password. Now, in order to match it, like if the user was to log in, you would obviously have to match the the entered plain text password to this this long string right here. Um, so let's create another function. I'm going to say a sync and let's say compare passwords. And this is going to take in two things as well. It's going to take in uh, whoops, I forgot function. It's going to take in plain text and it's going to take in the hash. Okay, um, and then in here we want to call a method called compare. So it'll be bcrypt.compare, which also returns a promise. Okay, so let's say const is match. And since it returns a promise, we're going to use a wait and then we're going to call bcrypt.compare, which will take in the plain text and the hash and it'll give us a true or false based on if it's the right password, if it matches the hash. So here let's just do an if um, is match, then we'll go ahead and just console log and we'll say match else. Then let's console log not match. OK, so we have this hash right here which should match the plain text password of one through six. So let's try it out. Let's comment that and call compare passwords and pass in one, two, three, four, five, six, and then pass in that hash. And let's see what we get. So clear this up and run it and we get match. Now, if I take off the six here or change it in any way, we get not match. If I have the correct password and I change the the hash I'll take off the last character we get not match. OK, so we can see that that is working. So that's that's the, the gist of how Bcrypt works. Obviously, you would implement this within your Express application or or Koa or whatever framework you're using uh, or no framework if you're not using a framework. So the next one we're going to look at and I know I'm moving kind of fast guys, but I want to be able to get you know get all these in in a relatively short amount of time so no jwt simple 
works very similar to the standard JSON web token package. Um, it's just a little simpler. So we basically need to just create a token with a payload um, and then decode it. Now, if you're not familiar with JSON web tokens, it's a way to authenticate. Okay, HTTP is stateless, so it's a way to um, it's a way to access private routes with a user. So basically, you would log in. You know, you'd you'd send your credentials to the database. If it was correct, then you'd get a token sent back to you, and then you could use that token in your header to make requests to a protected route, like let's say a route that adds a blog post or something like that. Um, so that's generally what. JSON web tokens are used for and you can you can put data inside the token. So let's create a new file here called underscore I'll call it JWT simple.js. And let's make sure we install it. So we want to npm install JWT dash simple. All right, and we're going to bring in bring this in. I'm just going to call it JWT and require JWT dash simple. All right, so we're going to have a we're going to have two functions here, one to get the token, one to validate it. So let's say get token. And in get token, I'm going to create a variable for the payload, basically the data that I want stored in that token um, that we can send, you know, send to a route. So I'll just do an ID and whoops, an object with an ID and a name. Okay, so this is the payload that I want stored in my token. Now to create it, we can say const token and we can set this to JWT dot encode. And then this takes in two things. It takes in the payload and it takes in a secret. So it could be any string. I'm just going to say secret and generally you don't want to just put it in just like this. You want it in some kind of environment variable um, which we can actually integrate with one of the other um, packages that I'm going to show you. So let's see, we have our token. Now I just want to return an object with the token. OK, and that's it. So if I go down here, I'm going to console log. Get token. And let's call this with node underscore JWT simple. And there it is. I get an object with this token. So now we need a function to um, validate that token. So it's going to take in the token. And this is pretty simple. All we have to do is decode it. So we'll say const decoded and we'll set that to JWT dot decode. And this takes in two things. It takes in the token itself and it takes in the secret. All right, and then let's just return decoded. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and comment that function call out and let's do another console log of validate token and it's going to take in Let's take this token that was generated and let's put that in there. Make sure it's on all in one line and then. Uh, yeah, that's all it gets, all it takes. So when I run this, what we should get back is the payload that we stored in it, which is this right here. All right, so I'm going to save this and let's run it. And there we go. We get the ID one and name Brad. OK, and I can actually take this token. And we can go to let's go to JWT.io and you can take any token and just put it right in here like that. And notice that the, the middle part here, it's broken up into three parts. The middle is the payload, which is the ID and the name. Okay, you also have the header, which is the algorithm and token type, and then you have the signature as well. All right, so now we're going to look at config or node config. So this is the the GitHub page and basically this is a way to have global variables that you can use all around your application and all you have to do is create a config folder with a default dot JSON and you can put your values in there and then when you're ready for production you can have a production dot JSON um, on your server and 
it'll it'll look at those values. Okay, if your node environment is equal to production, this it'll load that. Uh, so let's create. Let's first of all install it. So npm npm install config. Um, and then we're going to create a folder called config. And in there we're going to create a default dot JSON. Okay, and this is just a standard JSON. Let's put our secret, our JWT secret in here, which is something that you would probably do. And we'll just say my secret. All right, you might have something like um, you know your API key for for some service you're using which would be some long string stuff like that so let's save that and then what I'm going to do is go into the, the JWT simple file and bring in config oops what am I doing const equals a const config equals require config and then I'm going to replace just where I, I, I hard coded the secret string here. I can simply do config dot get and then whatever the key I use. So in this case, JWT secret. All right. And I'll do the same thing here. And then anywhere around the, the application where we need this secret, we can simply just do config dot get. So clear that out. And oops, if we just run that again. Wait, what's this signature verification failed? Um, config dot get JWT secret. Uh, why did that happen? So it looks like my token failed. Let's try to generate it again. I just want to make sure that this is working. All right, so we get our token. Let's take that and let's comment that out and uncomment this and pass that in. Ugh, I just copied that. All right, so we'll paste that in. Make sure this is all on the same line and let's run this. Okay, so now that works. So our secret is working and I could even just console log. We'll, we'll console log config dot get and I put one called API key just so you can see that we can access these whenever. All right, so you can see the API key right there. Okay, now the next one that I'm going to show you is Node UUID. Now, a UUID is a, a specific, specifically formatted type of uh, ID. It's like universal something ID. I forget exactly what it, what it's called, but basically, I use it for just whenever I need random IDs. If I'm hard coding data, like let's say an array of posts for prototyping or something, and I don't have a database yet that's going to add an ID for me, I'll use that to generate random IDs. Or just anything at all that you need a random ID for. So let's actually install this with npm install UUID. This is a very, very simple package. And then we'll just bring it in. UUID. All right. Now, what I'll do is just replace this one right here with UUID.v4. And then parentheses. The reason for that is there's different versions of these universal IDs. We want to use version four, which is the latest. So anywhere you put this, it'll just create some random ID for you. Okay. So I'm going to save this, and I believe if I run this, yeah, I'm still going to get one. So I need to actually generate a new token for that ID to be part of the payload. So let's do that. Okay, so we have this new token and should have the new I the generated ID in the payload. So we'll go ahead and uncomment that and put the new token in. And you can even see the token is longer here because the ID is much longer. So let's run that and there we go. So now we have the ID and this is how it's going to look. That's how it's going to be formatted and then the name Brad.
Okay, so just any place you need a random ID, it's a, it's a helpful package. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to show you is request, which is used to just to make HTTP requests. Uh, it's pretty common to use it within the node backend. So let's create, oops, let's create a file called underscore request.js. So for this, I'm going to, well, let's first install it. Say npm install request. And I'm going to work with the JSON placeholder API, which is just like a fake REST API. We can get posts to do stuff like that. So let's bring in request and so require request. And I'm going to create a function called get posts. And I'm going to create an options object that's going to have a few things. It's going to have a URI. which I'm going to hit HTTPS um, JSON placeholder dot type code dot com slash posts, which will just give me some posts in JSON format. And then we want to specify a method of get. And then uh, a lot of times we need to add headers and we need to add a user agent of Node.js. or it might complain. So user agent node.js and any other headers you want to send you can put in here. Okay? Um and then we just need to call request, pass in the options and then a callback which I'll use an arrow function. Okay, now this callback here can take in a uh, possible error, response data and the actual body. And then let's just go into here and check to see if there's an error. If there is, I'll just go ahead and throw the error. Uh whoops, whoa. If not, then let's just uh console log the body, but I'm going to wrap it in json.parse. Like that. Okay, so if we go ahead and run node_request whoops, space there. Okay, we got nothing because I didn't call the function, so let's call get posts. And there we go. So we get a bunch of JSON uh posts with a user ID, ID, title, body, and so on. All right, so I think that's it, guys. Like I said, I want this to be a continued continuing series. Um if you think that's a good idea, let me know if you like this. Also, if you have any ideas for packages that you think would would fit into the category of having a specific um task, you know, nothing nothing huge or anything that's going to take a, a an hour to explain, put feel free to put those in the comments, something that you find very useful that you use all the time. Um and I might do even certain categories like uh packages for React or packages for Vue, stuff like that as well. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.